Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Rana Higgins. I am a minimally invasive and bariatric surgery fellow at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Dr. John Gould is a consultant for Torex Medical. Otherwise, all the remaining authors have nothing to disclose. So the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System was introduced in 1999 with five versions released since that time, most recently the XI in April of 2014 with thinner arms and greater range of motion. In 2014, 570,000 Da Vinci robotic procedures were performed, which is a 178% increase since 2009. Initially, the da Vinci was primarily used in gynecology and urology, but over the past three years, there has been an increasing use in general surgery. As you can see here, between 2011 and 2014, now general surgery is second to gynecology in terms of total procedures used with the da Vinci. So there are numerous advantages of robotics, specifically in comparison to laparoscopic surgery, such as 3D visualization, improved dexterity, more degrees of freedom, and more optimal ergonomics for the surgeon operating. However, some of the disadvantages are its unproven clinical benefit, its absence of touch sensation, and as is relevant to this talk, its cost. So the cost uh, versus clinical benefit for robotics has become the major controversy in its use surrounding general surgery. Some of the costs to consider include its capital or initial cost, the maintenance cost, and the cost of consumables. The capital cost, as you can see here, has increased over the past, with, each, um, with each model, most recently the Da Vinci XI at around $1.85 million. The maintenance costs include an annual service fee of around $150,000, and regarding consumable costs, this adds an additional around $1,500 to $2,000 per case. Now, the SAGE's TAVIC committee published a literature review in 2015 reviewing the da Vinci surgical system in GI surgery, specifically foregut, bariatrics, hepatobiliary, and colorectal. They focused on a few parts of the da Vinci within GI surgery, one of which was safety. They demonstrated no increased morbidity or mortality when comparing robotic to laparoscopic GI surgery. Regarding efficacy, they found that it was effective but not necessarily superior to laparoscopic surgery with similar benefits when comparing laparoscopic to open surgery. And regarding costs, they found that it was more costly, including equipment, servicing, OR time, and consumables. So in conclusion, they identified that GI surgery with the da Vinci is safe and comparable to laparoscopic surgery, but not superior. So the purpose of our study was to determine the differences in the cost of operative consumables in elective laparoscopic and robotic general surgery procedures. We obtained our cost data from our Compass database between the years of 2013 and 2015. The laparoscopic and robotic procedures we identified were Nissen fundoplication, inguinal hernia repair, and cholecystectomy. The types of patients we um, identified were outpatient, elective, and single procedure cases, and the data we evaluated were length of stay, case duration, and to total consumable supply cost. We also noted, and I'll discuss further in the results, there are certain outliers, which, were, which we defined as robotic instruments that cost greater than $1,000 for a single case. Our hospital healthcare system includes three hospitals with three da Vinci robots at two hospitals, and general surgeons have access to the robotic platform. In order to be credentialed to use the robotic system, they must be credentialed to perform the same operation open. They must complete a da Vinci training course. They must um, undergo three observed robotic cases. Two must be performed with a proctor, and five additional cases must be performed with an experienced robotic surgeon. And proctored cases must be performed within two months of training. So th these are our results for robotic versus laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication. As you can see, there was no difference in mean length of stay. The case duration was longer for the robotic procedure at 197 minutes versus 162. The total supply cost was two times greater at around $4,100 versus $1,900. We did identify there were some cases where mesh was used, five cases in the robotic and six in the laparoscopic, and there were no differences in terms of cost. 
Um, in terms of mean number of robotic instruments used, there were five instruments used on average in the robotic cases. And then here lists the instruments both including and excluding outliers. And you can see there's uh, over a double increase when you include the outlier instruments. Now for rob robotic versus laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, there was a statistical difference in mean length of stay, but it was 1.1 versus one day, so we did not feel this was clinically significant. The mean case duration was longer for the robotic inguinal hernia repair. The total supply cost was also greater, around $1,900 versus $1,400. And the mesh supply cost was also greater for robotic cases. The average number of robotic instruments used were three, and there were no outliers in this cohort of patients. And finally, robotic versus laparoscopic cholecystectomy. There was no difference in mean length of stay or case duration. The total supply cost was almost three times as much for the robotic cholecystectomy versus the laparoscopic. There was an average of four instruments used and around five outlier instruments, which uh, showed a cost difference of $600 to $900. So one thing to note in our results is that we only considered consumable costs in this analysis. It does not include the initial acquisition costs, the depreciation, or the service contract. We did identify an increased cost with robotic general surgery procedures and a longer case duration for robotic Nissens and inguinal hernia repairs. So in conclusion, in our healthcare system, there is a significantly higher cost of robotic to laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication, cholecystectomy, and inguinal hernia repair. In our opinion, unless we can identify a significant patient-centered clinical advantage, we believe robotics and general surgery is not cost-effective. Thank you. I'll take any questions. <laughs>